It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today I'm actually super excited because I've got the amazing privilege to be building a prototype keyboard for AE boards. Now, if you don't know who AE boards are or AE keyboards, they are the creators of the Aegis keyboard, which was a left-hand numpad sort of almost 1800 kind of style of board. It was done as a group buy in a very limited number, about 50 units I think was the initial run, and it was very successful. And this is actually the prototype kit for their second keyboard, and it's called the EXT65. So I've got it in a box here in front of me, and uh, AE Boards was very, very generous to reach out to me and asked if I was interested in actually building one of their prototype kits and sharing my experiences and thoughts with you all. So please remember as I go through this and as you look at it, this is one of their early prototypes. They've already been sort of using it a little bit to check for fit and look and feel and weight and everything else. And whatever comes out as their production model is actually going to be slightly different. So with that in mind, let's flick over to the desktop and have a look at what has come through. So what they've written here is there is one of the EXT65 PCB. It is a gasket mount keyboard and they've popped in some zeals and some stabilizers. I will be doing lubing and band-aid modding as well. Okay, so let's uh, get this open. Now the box is actually quite big. This is not reflective of the production box because well it's prototype so i'm gonna just pop it over here on the side so we've got some switches that uh, have been provided i think they're zeal v2s maybe we've got some stabilizers there's some uh o-rings there's the screws looks like one of the stabilizers have popped out, but that's okay. Uh, they look like, okay, so they'll need clipping. And there is LEDs in here. And what's really cool and interesting, which I'll get to in a moment, is uh, there's some LED spaces involved in this as well. We have a PCB here. We've got some gaskets. Assuming it's, uh, the camera's gonna Behave. No. Has everything been fuzzy while I've been talking? No, it hasn't been. What is going on with you, camera? Do you need do you need some text? There we go. Okay. Sorry. My uh my camera is not behaving. So there is actually a packet of gaskets in here. Uh, we've got some foam for the bits and pieces. And then here is a... So the actual set, when you get it, I've been told, will also come with a sleeve. So this is actually, I believe, one of the designs for the sleeve. I just can't remember off the top of my head if it's actually production or if it's also one of their prototype sleeves. So that's the uh, the AE boards logo there, and the uh, actual keyboard itself. So let's just put the PCB aside, and let's just put that underneath. And so this is the board in grey. What I've been told is that there's three colours on offer for this particular keyboard. This is the dark grey. There's a black, and there is a navy version as well and i did get to see all three when i went to pick up this kit and they look really nice the finish on this is is really really lovely we've got four led indicator holes over here so you can have your standard uh num lock scroll lock caps lock and then the fourth one is kind of like a layer indication light however you want to program it now you'll notice there's actually pcb in here but this is a prototype fitment PCB with no components uh, put together in it, so it doesn't actually work. That's why I actually have a 
separate PCB as part of this kit that I'll be using to build it. So it's very similar to the Aegis in that it is a left hand numpad scenario. However, what makes this really cool and unique is that the base piece for this is reversible. And what I mean by that is right now, this keyboard in its current orientation is in a standard angle. So it lifts at the back. However, um, it's actually been designed so that you can flip the base 180 and achieve a negative angle, which is absolutely fantastic, which is really cool. And you know that I have a thing about negative angle keyboards as part of my preferences, especially that something that I'd put into consideration when I designed the prototype for the down bubble keyboard of my own project. So I'm actually going to be building this as a negative angle keyboard. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing is putting the same keycaps that you may have seen in one of my earlier videos when I was testing these keycaps out on the down bubble. It is a sculpted SA set. I just can't remember if it's a row one inclusive or if it's a two, two, three, 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 that type of thing, but it doesn't matter. We'll put it on. We'll check it out later as well. Some of the things that we need to be aware of is that these have normal screws on it as part of the prototype but the production version will have cap head screws. So the actual fitment and sockets of these are slightly different in how they look and their size. And I need to get a screwdriver to open this up. So that's just a standard Phillips head. I've got one here. Just trying to decide what's a good size for that. That's a good size. So we'll check out the insides of this. And uh, I'll get out my magnetic pad just so my screws don't go missing. Assuming that these are actually uh, magnetic, which they may or may not be. Looks like they are. So that's cool. This is when a uh, electric screwdriver would be probably very handy if I had one. So these are very long screws. Three of the four came out. There we go. Four out of four. So, so let's just flip that around the right way. So the top comes off and we can see that there's these really big recessed holes here that have a pinhole through for the actual LEDs to light their way. And now I'm going to talk about these LED spaces because what we typically find on a lot of builds, uh, especially the simpler ones, the LEDs will sit flush on the PCB. But with very small LEDs like these, uh, it means that if they sit on the PCB, the light will diffuse around and outside and through between the plate. So you're not going to get a very clean kind of appearance. So 
Some OEM manufacturers already do this, but they have these. And this is essentially a, a component spacer. So this component space has been measured to suit and where did that LED just go? There it is. And so you basically drop these through it just like that and it increases the height and positioning and so when it sits through the actual PCB it lifts the LED height so it's going to be nice inside there so the actual amount of light that is being emitted only goes through the hole and has very minimal amounts of sort of diffusion around the actual keyboard and space so you shouldn't get much light bleed out of that at all so that'll be really cool because I've never actually built a keyboard that's had that but I've seen them before because when I took my Philco apart and hand wired it it actually had these in it so that's uh, going to be part of the actual kit design so now let's just take the plate off and so I mentioned this earlier in that <clears throat> this is a gasket mount keyboard and when we talk about gasket mounting we're talking about that the plate and the PCB do not have any attachment points so you'll notice this plate is completely devoid of any screw holes but it's got these large surfaces here which actually mount with these gaskets now these have been put on um, as part of their prototype testing but when you actually get the kit for production so I've been told you're gonna get a packet that's like this and the packet contains a variety of different materials so we've got silicon we've got foam we've got rubber and I've been told that there's actually a fourth material I believe it's going to be uh, the sorb sorbethane is going to be I think the extra material um, my apologies a keyboards if uh, <coughs> I got that wrong because I didn't write anything down <laughs> but there will actually be a fourth material so this is this is where it gets interesting because you know the actual the plate is held between the gaskets and the gaskets act as a dampener but gives a little bit more flex so it's not as rigid as if it's hard screwed in but it's also not as flexible compared to free floating plates where it's the PCB that's actually screwed into the case and the plate is just sitting there held up by the switches so this will be the first time I've ever built a gasket mount keyboard so that'll be really interesting to see how that feels because I've never really played very much with one um, now these have already been installed so there's obviously two four six eight and you'll see there's two four six eight here but the top half also has these sockets so I'm gonna ask the question from AE boards to find out if I need to install these to go on top because these are the silica ones they've already been pre-installed if you're very very careful about it you can actually remove them to change them but with the foam ones because the foam is much softer and has a tendency to stretch and deform when you pull on them you might actually end up breaking them or damaging them to the point where you can't reuse them so it's just something that you have to think about when you start your build on what gasket material you want to try and I guess they'll probably hopefully offer um, you know replacement parts for them if you do want to try and change different gasket materials so back in the packet they go now and I talked about the orientation of the case and the case bottom itself and you'll notice there's the channel top and bottom for the USB well the design is very clever in that it rotates to allow positive and negative angle there's no neutral angle offered as part of this but the positive and negative angle is available so that's kind of really one of the really cool features that's going on here and you can see this is just one of their prototype PCBs there's been no components put on it so it's obviously not going to work um, and down here you can see in the reflection there it is the ext 65 prototype 001 so i'm very lucky to actually have my hands on this to show and share with you guys and also put it together courtesy of a boards 
So it's very slick. It's got a really good weight about it. Uh, it looks fantastic in this dark gray and I can't wait to put it together. <coughs> Sorry, I have been ill. Um, still trying to get through the sort of last bits and pieces and of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do what I usually do, which is we're going to do a pause for the video and then I'm going to shoot it separately and sort of wrap it into a, into a time lapse. And then at the end, come together and talk about how it feels, any issues building it, noting that it is prototype. Uh, and then sort of my experiences typing with it, giving you a sound sample and so on and so forth. So I'll catch you very shortly on the other side. So we're back. I haven't built anything uh, because I realized that we did actually unpack and have a look at the PCB. So I do apologize for that. So very quickly, uh, this is actually the PCB and it's super cool. So that's the AE boards logo on it. And what you might notice is it's completely black, but it has like a matte black coat compared to most PCBs. You know, even if we look at just something very basic, one of one of the ones that I'd sort of put together, they tend to be glossy. They tend to be glossy surface. And so even if you get it in a different color, they're not matte in their texture. And this is matte black, which looks absolutely amazing. So this is the prototype PCB as I'm, uh, actually no, this is a production PCB, my bad. The prototype is the red one. And the only thing that you have to be aware of is there's actually five holes for LEDs, but the bottom one is not in use. They were a little bit ambitious on it. And I think they kind of just went, you know what? That's too many LEDs. <coughs> so in theory, it shouldn't line up to a hole. And on the back, it's pretty standard in regards to the layout. And, uh, you know, you can, you can just see the traces in the reflection, like this stuff that's here, that shininess there underneath. And it's very neat. It's very clean. They're you know, factory soldered components on it so hopefully there should be no issues with it whatsoever so there you go so that's what the actual pcb looks like it's very clean uh, i do like the fact that it's just got the logo and nothing splashed across it not that you'll really see it um but uh yeah very very cool indeed all right now we're gonna go and actually put some stuff together Alrighty, so we are back and you can see now that this keyboard, just going to move something very dangerous to my cables, uh, is completely built. The LEDs are working and these are bright as. Now, even though they have actually been raised up and mounted into that cavity space, I can see, I don't know if the camera is going to show it very well because these LEDs will saturate that, but uh, if I take some of them off, 
you can see there is you can see there's a little bit of light that's actually still bleeding through from underneath but definitely nowhere near as much as if uh, they weren't sitting higher and in that recess in the top of the actual keyboard <coughs> now uh, one of the things obviously that we haven't really talked about is exactly how much this weighs it is a aluminium top and bottom with a aluminium plate so I've got my trusty uh, kitchen scales here and we will find out so I'm going to disconnect that it is a USB-C connection by the way I forgot to mention that but uh, it will require USB there not USB 3 USB C so let's get that on we'll tear that to zero and make sure nothing is contacting it over there so we're looking at 1.62 with a keycap set on it of course it's going to be plus and minus a little bit because some of my keycaps aren't exact fit sizes as you can see over here there's a bit of a gap but that's okay so let's take that away so that's uh what about four pounds just under four pounds if you're one of those who are still living in the imperial world about 1.6 kilos 1.62 okay so how does that negative angle feel well this key set, uh, I think it's actually a two, 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 three, three. Yeah, it's a two, two, three, three. But this is where it gets really interesting because once it's actually been put into the negative, it actually almost looks completely even. It almost looks completely flat. But it definitely is actually a sculpted set. And when it sits on the keyboard, that negative angle for sure gives you that impression of it being flat like a row three so I'm just going to use my phone because it's probably a little bit easier to try and get how that looks and uh, my messy desk behind it <clears throat> so we can see that it definitely has that curve from that row one happening there but it evens out with that negative angle so overall it actually still has a negative angle and it really cuts away at how steep that row one row two angle is which i think is absolutely fantastic so in terms of comfort it's quite comfortable if you're not going to have your wrists on the table because that front end is sitting What's that? About just over three centimeters off the table. And uh, just to actually check it properly, it's 29 mil. So, you know, it's over an inch high at the front. So if you're not using a wrist rest, then you probably will find it quite uncomfortable. If you have your wrists floating, then there is no issue at all. So this I quite like it because I'm accustomed to using a negative angle at work with my down bubble prototype and I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the control and flashing of this and I'll also switch over to my monitor because what I've got going here is I've got switch header it's currently on the settings are cleared out where is the actual plug there it is okay so let's plug that in and Gondor calls for aid because those LEDs are super bright so We've got the escape row, we've got the num row, all the way across, backspace is swapped with 
my um, pipe and backslash key. So I guess if I actually uh, bothered went going back into the bag of goodies here, I can actually set it up the way that it's meant to be. But that's okay. It's not an absolute necessity. Uh, and then, of course, tab, the QWERTY row. It's all good. The what I've put here in the control position is actually registering control, so it's not caps lock. And then you'll see that row is fine. Shift as is, normal row, bottom with the short shift, and then the up key. Then we go control again, which is really, um, well, it's unusual because most people, if they change control up to where the caps lock is, then that control will be something else, but that's fine. This is just a default hex that was provided to me. Uh, from the PCB designer simply because it's currently not available on uh, QMK Configurator and it's not currently available on VR Configurator but it will actually be on VR at some point in time once the VR team get onto that spacebar works then I've actually got a function key which if you have a look very carefully where the lights are here on the left hand side in that little strip when I press the function key it actually lights up to indicate that the function layer is activated so that's pretty neat I think that works out really great and then you've got another control left down right we've got print screen up on the side delete page up page down and that completes the normal 60% block the numpad is actually reversed in that it's flipped for the left hand so one two three instead of it going left to right it's going right to left as my keycaps show it four five six seven eight nine num lock which once again turns on and off the uh the led that you can see there so it's happening there which is really good uh and then slash times minus plus enter dot and zero so all the keys work, which is really good, which is super positive, but uh, the function layer is where we're going to find some of these, I believe. So I've been told, I just don't know what is on that first function layer. So we've got a, a page down there, uh, which is a little bit random, in between S and F is a page down. <laughs> What else are we going to find? Okay. Well, the numbers are just registering normal as numbers. Page or page down is exactly the same. Functions don't change there. The function there doesn't change there. The numpad functions don't change. And none of those do anything. So it looks like the function layer does actually work. They just haven't actually programmed anything into the default hex that they were using for testing. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. There's no reason that it actually had to have uh, those other missing keys programmed in. I actually had no idea what to expect from it. And well, there's no issue with that whatsoever. All right. so. Now, let's just do a bit of a, a sound typing sample. So these are actually uh, Zeal V2s in there. And this is that uh, KVD fans PBT Dysub SA keycap set. So let's drop the mic down. Do a bit of typing. So I suppose the only other thing that I kind of should mention in this is obviously that 
uh, I'd put the Band-Aid mod into this. So I put strips of the actual Band-Aids uh, underneath where the stabilizers will be striking against the PCB so it sort of mellows out the sound there. I don't know why my camera is choosing to not focus on the table surface. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, that was actually pretty fun to build. Uh, it took me about two hours all up to put it together. I did contact uh, AE boards about the gasket mount and no gasket was actually required for the top piece. So it's, it's the recessing there is actually to hold in the plate in the right position. If you do assemble it and you don't keep it flat when you're in assembly, there is a risk that it won't sit in the right positions on top of the gaskets and therefore it's gonna slide around and prevent you from being able to put it together. So make sure that you do seat that plate in position before you put the base together and then the screw holes won't be obstructed either. So some comments, I'm not sure what's going on here because I mean, this is the prototype, right? So <coughs> hopefully these kind of issues won't be here in production, but the keycap sizes, I'm not 100% sure what is with that. Noting that uh, there's a big gap there, there's a gap there, and then of course, well, I could have used a different size function key. So that's really probably more on me, but I'm not sure what that aspect is going on there. Now, if I take the keycaps off, you'll notice it's not actually designed for multiple layouts. So uh, is that just a spacing thing? Is it a specific design aesthetic that they've gone for? I don't 100% know, but that's just something to be aware of when uh, you actually have a look at this in production. Now, I'm not anticipating that I'm going to get a production board to play with uh, or review and so on and so forth. So I'm more than happy with what I've been able to experience today. I quite like it. It sounds really nice with the Zeal V2s. It feels really good. It's got a lot of snap to it. Even the bottom out sound is really nice. It's not very hard or harsh or clicky. If I put O-rings into these keycaps, then I would expect that bottom out sound to be even less and be more mellow. Overall, I really like the design. It's very clean. It's very slick. It's got a good weight about it. It doesn't move at all at 1.6 kilos. The angle feature is really funky, so super happy that there is negative angle on this as well. Well, that wraps up my build and review video. I want to say thank you, of course, to AE Boards for actually letting me play with this kit. I do not get to keep this, <laughs> so it will go home to uh, AE Boards. Of course, I'll take my own keycaps off it, but uh, no, it was lots of fun, and I hope that if this interests you in terms of its design, its layout, its versatility for positive and negative angle, its weight, and just in general, please go check out the AE Boards website and have a look at what they've done with this and get involved with group buys or sales, whatever it is that they've been doing um, in between when I got this prototype to uh, when it goes out to full production. So there you go. If you like this kind of stuff, please hit the like button. If you want anyone else to know about AE boards and the EXT65, then please hit that share button. Of course, leave some comments below if you got thoughts on what you like and what you don't like about this keyboard, or even just in general, the way that I build, the way that I look and talk. <laughs> I don't know. Just get involved with the community. Um, and I wanna say, yeah, Hit that bell button, hit that subscribe button, and of course, we'll see you on the next video. So, until next time, happy clacking. Hey, so, yes, this is just an extension to the video that uh, you would have just completed, but I wanted to add this little extra bit on the end to the video just to talk about layouts for the EXT65. So I had a chance to chat with AE boards and the mistake that I had, well, maybe it's not really a mistake, but the key set availability that was what I put on the keyboard that you would have seen before doesn't actually match the intended design 
for the bottom row. So what we're talking about here is that the bottom row, I had used a standard layout on the left hand side, which was the 125, 125, 125, and then the 625 spacebar, which resulted in a gap on the left of the control and the right of the Alt key. Now, I knew that my 1U function key was also not correct, which I already mentioned, so that's why there's a gap on the either side of that. So, essentially, it's actually a 1.5, 1, 1 1.5, and 625, which uh, should be the right layout for the bottom row, which uh, will mean your bottom row won't have those weird gaps, and of course, on this side, it would be a 1, 2, 5, and a 1, whereas I just had a 1 and a 1. So that's just uh, something to be aware of, and that is the, the available layout intent that is here. Um, and this is a bit of a sneak peek as well of the website, because this, this page is currently not live, but you can see it is going to be compatible via QMK and the VIA configurator as well. So once again, thanks very much for hanging out and checking this video out please of course hit that like button smash that uh, share button and of course subscribe if you haven't yet so as always until next time happy clacking